Good morning, everyone. It's 7.31 a.m. Central Daylight Time. This is Francis, your favorite amateur astronomer and part-time dairy farmer. Welcome to today. I know that most of you have been missing the space reports from me, and it would be true. Going from an hour a day, Monday through Friday, to hardly a Friday night must be strange but I'll tell you that it's been busy so you have to bear with me and I thought I have five minutes this morning to do a report and let's look to see what's interesting in the headlines from space right here we have on the top SpaceX rocket lifts off for space station trial run uh, today uh, there will be a series of tests being performed with the Dragon module headed for the International Space Station to be docked sometime around Friday of this week. Um, very interesting news. Uh, the successful launch after one failure or one abort. Uh, uh, I wish them well. I wish them luck. I wish I could follow it. I, I'm sure you might be able to find some news on NASA TV or here uh, or on YouTube. But uh, I will be at the farm today taking care of uh, the retail customers purchasing raw milk products. So uh, do uh, not fear. The work that we do is uh, good for everyone. Uh, NASA needs a rebirth. Uh, I'm not going to go into that. We're just going to scroll down and look at it. California Science Center names new wing for space shuttle endeavor. Yep. Uh, Kennedy Space Center celebrates 50th anniversary, allowing visitors rare access. Planet X, odd orbits in solar system may mean unseen object astronomer. Let's go ahead and talk about that. Um, that's going to be difficult because it's off-center. So let's see. Let's just bring it over. If we had to bring it over, let's hope it works. Planet X, odd orbits in solar system may mean unseen object astronomer conjectures. Um, <clears throat> I really don't like those kind of titles, and I don't. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to discount the research that the man did, but let's get into it by Natalie Wolchover, and this is on the Huffington Post too. So this is this could be opinionated, and who knows? And I might as well be opinionated too. But let's read it. Uh, oh yeah, let's let's have some ads because that's what we love to have. Uh, a planet four times the size of Earth may be skirting the edge of the solar system beyond Pluto, according to new research. Too distant to be easily spotted by Earth-based telescopes, the unseen planet could be gravitationally tugging on small icy objects past New Neptune, helping explain the mystery of those objects' peculiar orbits. The claim comes from Rodney Gomes, a noted astronomer at the National Observatory of Brazil, de Rio de Janeiro. Gomes presented his recently completed computer models suggesting the existence of the distant planet at a meeting of the American Astronomical Society in Timberline Lodge, Oregon, earlier this month. And I was thinking as I was reading this, and I've read it before a couple of days now, uh, this Timberline Lodge, Oregon. Sounds like a wonderful place. Uh, coming from Rio and coming to Timberline Lodge, Oregon for a, an American Astronomical Society get-together. Uh, <clears throat> Rodney Gomes uh, is has been vetted in so far as that I've read some an article from uh, a view from one of his friends, and his friend said, well, if Rodney did the math, then it can't be wrong. But let's continue. Astronomers who attended the talk find Gomes' argument compelling, but they say much more evidence is needed before the hypothetical planet can be crowned as real. Let's remember uh, one of the planets that we found, one of the planets that we already know of, Neptune or Uranus, uh, was discovered through perturbations of their orbits. And so that one of them, I'm not sure if it was Neptune or Uranus, one of the one of the planets they found on the first try with a telescope now they do say that it was kind of lucky that they found it i guess when they found it back in the 30s or something i don't remember exactly when but this is just what i know my experience and one of the planets that we already have in the solar system was found on the first try through perturbations and here we have ronnie gomes doing some computer simulations showing that the orbits of the outer planets in this case sedna See, we have the 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 
planets and then we have farther out into the Kuiper belt there is a, a portion of the Kuiper belt called the scattered disk See, because you have all our planets and then you reach out as far as you can get past Neptune and there's the Kuiper belt past Neptune and the thing with the Kuiper belt is that part of the Kuiper belt gets interacted with by other things like Neptune and Pluto and um, farther out from the scattered disk there's a part of the Kuiper belt where there's no interaction there's no interaction with the objects out there because they're so far out and with the objects in here so you have Neptune scattered disk and then objects that have no interaction with anything but they're in and they're, they're in the they're in this disk of material and um, Rodney Gomes uh, models suggest that there is a planet out there four times the size of Earth that has affected objects in this part of the Kuiper belt such as Sedna to it to put Sedna on such a weird orbit but they haven't found the object yet this is, again is modeling math without observation uh, and will continue for several years, astronomers have observed that a handful of small icy bodies that lie in the so-called scattered disk beyond the orbit of the planet Neptune, including the dwarf planet Sedna, deviate from the paths around the Sun. That would be expected based on the gravitational pulls of all the known objects in the solar system. Sedna, for example, swings around the Sun in an extremely elongated orbit, tracing out a very long oval. Said Sedna's orbit is truly peculiar, said Mike Brown, an astronomer at Caltech who led the team that discovered Sedna in 2003. However, when Gomes ran the same calcula calculations with the addition of the gravitational pull of a massive planet at the outskirts of the solar system, Sedna and the other anomalous objects expected orbits fell in line with observations. The unseen planet would be too far away to perceptibly perturb the motions of Earth and the other inner planets, but close enough to the scattered disk objects to sway them. Unknown entity. Several planet types could fit the disturbances seen in Gomes's calculations. For example, a Neptune-sized planet about four times bigger than Earth, orbiting 140 billion miles away from the Sun, would influence the anomalous objects in the observed manner, or a Mars-sized planet with a highly elongated orbit, but one that always kept it well beyond the orbit of Pluto could yield similar results. As for how it got there, the planet could have been born in and expelled from a distant star system and later captured by our sun's gravity, Gomes said, or it could have formed near our sun and gradually been thrust outward through gravitational interactions with the other planets. Though Gomes's work has not yet been peer-reviewed, his colleagues are confident he got the math right. Gomes is very good. It's hard to imagine he made a mistake in his calculations, said Hal Levison, a planetary scientist at the Southwest Research Institute in Boulder, Colorado. And this is where I got this from a couple, uh, earlier in the week. Rodney Gomes is actively seeking further evidence and await his findings with interest. Douglas Hamilton, an astronomer at the University of Maryland, told Life's Little Mysteries. He has taken on a difficult task, but is taking the right approach. It is definitely a high-risk, high-reward situation. A discovery of a new planet would be spectacular. New planet or old star? This would not be the first time a planet was revealed by the way of its gravitational effects on other celestial bodies. The existence of Neptune was hypothesized at a turn of the century at the turn of the nineteenth century, long before the gas giant was actually seen through a telescope in eighteen forty six because of the way it w was perturbing the orbit of Uranus. <coughs> On the other hand, many astronomers spent much of the 1900s searching for an extra planet, dubbed Planet X, beyond the orbit of Neptune because they believed there were, were anomalies in the orbits of Neptune and the other gas giants. But it turned out that the anomaly in Neptune's orbit was the result of bad observation, Levison said. The search for Planet X was called off, though some conspiracy theorists believe this was a cover-up of the planet Nibiru, which they say is on a collision course for Earth. Let's go back. You can go back hundreds of years to claim. No, let me go back. You can go back hundred years to claims of planets in the outer solar system, and they've all eventually gone away. He continued. 
<clears throat> that should give us pause for thought. Just because there's not a good explanation for the orbits of the scattered disk objects besides another planet doesn't mean there won't be a good explanation in the future. Brown, who's discovered Sedna, said another plausible explanation for the dwarf planet's strange behavior could be that a star swung near it early in the history of our solar system, throwing it for a loop. Back at the time of the birth of the sun, the sun probably formed in a cluster of other stars. If true, they would have been close enough together to influence each other's outer planet system, like where Sedna is, he said. More work is needed to determine where Sedna and the other scattered dist objects were sent on their circuitous trips around the sun by a star that passed by long ago or by an unseen planet that exists in the solar system right now. Finding and observing the orbits of other distant objects similar to Sedna will add more data points to astronomers' computer models. We and a couple of other groups of astronomers are working hard to see if we can track some down and figure out this mystery, Brown said. <clears throat> okay, so that's the article. Um, tells us a little, doesn't tell us a, a whole lot. We're going to have to as astronomers, as mathematicians, as computer modelers work together to solve this mystery. Uh, they talked about a, a planet that, that orbit elongated around the sun, but at such, an at such a large orbit that it didn't even come in within Pluto. I've spoken about the scattered disk before, I've spoken about the Kuiper belt before, I've imaged Pluto before. <clears throat> I suppose as astronomers we might want to try it after Sedna. We can try that. And that will give me a mission. Uh, this is my report for this morning. I've read the article. I know what it says. They say his math is right. They say the computer model is probably right. If it follows his math, we're just unable to find this object because it's so far out. Imagine the size of the orbit. Um, that object's out there right now. And at that distance, it would take forever to get here. Does it add credence, credibility, context to any other stories about any other objects or planets? It will have to be researched to be discovered. Does not prove the existence of one. Doesn't ex prove the existence of it. But we will follow it. Uh, I am interested I will always be interested in these objects for ever more ever more and so you can be guaranteed that when I find these articles and data points I take note of them and try to fit them in my schedule but for now I have to go I hope you all have a great uh, Wednesday afternoon at 7:44 a.m. here Central Daylight Time in Cypress Texas this is your space report about potential planet X the tenth planet which would become the ninth planet since they downgraded Pluto. Uh, so we're looking still for the ninth planet. We're interested in objects, icy objects as they are described, like Pluto and Sedna. And we'll revisit Pluto and look for Sedna in the future. So have a great day. I'm going to the farm. Got things to do. We'll talk to you soon. Uh, I'll try to maintain doing these reports as best as I can. Uh, and that's all I can do. Do the best I can. We'll see you later. Join me on Facebook. Uh, there's links over there. Uh, I recommend it. And that's facebook.com forward slash fuzzy was here. That's right. Fuzzy was here. We'll talk to you later.